Hey everyone, welcome to Polycasm, the only channel on YouTube that is not sponsored by a VPN. And that is a scientific fact. For this week's design principles video, we are going to be sketching a quick character idea and of course use Blender to help us with the process. I wanted to show how you can jump into Blender to help you with a specific part of the design and get results even if you have the modeling skills and knowledge of a 4 year old like I do. We are also going to take advantage of the Cable Rater add-on to create some, well, cables. Then I'll quickly add some light and color on this design to bring it to a presentable finish. Alright, let's get started. I find it very useful to start with a focus on the overall gesture first. This can be as simple as blocking in a stick figure with the ribcage and hip volumes roughly sketched in. This is just enough information at first to get an idea on the pose and proportions of my character. Even before I block in the volume for his arms, you can see how I am indicating a smaller, shorter upper arm and a longer lower arm for this guy. I'm just playing around with the proportions to find something interesting. As I keep working on this, I'm defining his overall volume further. At some point I'll usually block in a darker value overall just so I can see his silhouette more clearly. I'm staying zoomed out and focusing on adjusting his silhouette, refining the shape language and tweaking things around. Here, I started another sketch as I wasn't super happy with the first one. This is why sketching loosely to begin with is a great idea. If I change my mind and want to start something new, then I can do that right away without having wasted too much time. As you can see right now, I'm breaking his silhouette into smaller shapes with a darker value. The value separation is really important in character design. Your character's silhouette is always your priority and once you have a silhouette that you like, you need to start thinking about creating an interesting composition within that silhouette. I find that working with a few values to achieve that always provides better results. I'm not going to refine this sketch too much just now, and as you can see, I left his legs very loose. There's just enough information there to give me an idea, and instead of refining these mechanical parts by drawing, I want to try something different. Say about your character as a JPEG or PNG or whatever you feel like, then let's jump into Blender. Now, I have my Blender viewport set up, so I have the camera view on the left hand side. With your camera selected, go to Object Data Properties tab and enable Background Images. Click Add Image, then Open. Find the image you saved out and click the Open Image. Yeah, it's looking a bit squinty. Let's fix that. Go to Output Properties and enter your image's dimensions there. Okay, this is a lot better. If you go back to Object Data Properties tab, you can adjust the opacity of your image. Now, if we add the mesh in, you can see it's blocking our view right now. So let's click on the front button and now we can see our image while modeling. And that's it, we are all set up and it's time to start modeling a really rough mesh to figure out this guy's legs. As you can see, I'm using the rainbow shader as a matcap. The reason I'm doing this is because Christina has suggested that I do this and god damn it she was right, it was a good suggestion okay? It, it really helped me see the geometry better, this way the geometry really stands out, especially with the sketch that I have in the background. So yeah, I'd highly recommend you guys also try using this matcap. I'm just using super basic modeling techniques here, nothing fancy. I'm not really good at modeling, but for this process you don't have to be good at it and that's, that's the beauty of it. Okay, let's make some cables. I've already downloaded and enabled the Cable Rater add-on by Sergey Kritsky, as you can see here. The default shortcut for it is Shift-Alt-C. Once you hit that shortcut, you will get this menu. All you have to do is click on Create Cable, then select two points for each end of the cable. 
and oh okay wow this this cable is a bit big so let's go to the object data properties tab and adjust the number for depth under bevel that way we can change the thickness of the cable and now if you go into the edit mode you can move these nodes around to manipulate your cable the other option is to draw cable and that literally lets you draw a line like this which turns into a cable as you can see once I have a good base for one leg, I copy that over and adjust it a little to create the second leg. I then change the matte cap and under render properties tab, I click on film, then enable transparent so I can get a viewport render without a background. I save this render out, then back to Photoshop we go. Let's bring our render in and place it over our character. I'm going to mask some parts of it so it matches the design better. Knock back the opacity and time to draw. As I'm drawing over the 3D base, I'm adding more details and fleshing out the design. Of course, I could have done this whole process with just drawing as well and honestly I am one of those people who will always preach about the importance of taking the time to learn these basic drawing skills but also there is no harm in learning these other techniques that let you take advantage of 3D tools as well. These can really help you out when you are in a tight spot. I am happy with the design of his legs for now so I lower the opacity on those and start going over the whole design with my final line art. I am adding more texture and details like cut lines, screw holes on the mechanical parts and anatomical details on his fleshy areas. I don't want to overwhelm every part of the design with detail. Since his legs are pretty intricate, I want other areas like his torso to be fairly simple so it can act as a rest area. When the line art is done, I block out his silhouette and start coloring in. I'm working with mid to dark values here as I'm going to add some light later on. When you're adding color, don't forget about the value separation. A trick that I use often is to create a layer filled with black on top and then change the blending mode for this layer to color. This way, I can turn on this layer whenever I want to check my values and make sure with the colors that I'm picking, I'm not losing my value separation. To add light, I'm using a solid color layer set to screen. I tend to use these solid color layers a lot when I'm painting, they, they really speed up the process. For my rim light, I'll be using another solid color layer, but this time set to linear dodge. And now all I do is just keep painting until I feel like I'm done. I tend to add a layer of noise over the final artwork to give it some extra texture, but when it comes to finishing touches that's about it i don't have a super secret technique on finishing my artwork really i tend to have a rough idea on how i want it to look like in my head and i try to get as close to that as i can and the moment i feel like i'm just mindlessly doodling around it's time to call it finished and that's it for this week's episode thank you all for your time and we'll see you again next week Take care, everyone.